Professor Zixnax's tendrils twitched nervously as he addressed the emergency meeting of the Galactic Academy's board. The hollow projector flickered, displaying footage of Dave's recent experiment in the atmosphere of Xylof Prime. As you can see, the professor said, his bioluminescent patches pulsing an anxious yellow mister. Johnson's approach to education is unconventional. The board members, representing a diverse array of galactic species, watched in stunned silence as the recording showed Dave shuttle narrowly avoiding disintegration in the gas giant's turbulent storms. Administrator Kral Thax, an imposing Vrexian with metallic scales and multiple cybernetic enhancements, leaned forward. Unconventional, he growled. It's downright insane. This human is a menace to himself and others. I move that we terminate his participation in the exchange program immediately. A murmur of agreement rippled through the assembled aliens. Professor Zixnax felt his heart sink all three of them. Despite the chaos Dave caused, there was something undeniably invigorating about having a human in the classroom. The professor found himself reluctant to lose that spark of unpredictability. If I may came an unexpected voice. All eyes turned to Glick Snorp, who had somehow oozed their way into the meeting unnoticed. While Mr. Johnson's methods are unorthodox, they have produced remarkable results. Student engagement and test scores have increased by 47% since his arrival. The Blorvian student projected a series of holographic charts from their gelatinous body, displaying the upward trend in academic performance. Administrator Kral Thax's cybernetic eye whirred as he processed the data. Impressive, he admitted grudgingly. But at what cost? The risk to student safety. He was interrupted by the sound of an explosion, followed by alarms blaring throughout the station. The board members looked at each other in panic. What now, Professor Zixnax groaned, as if in answer the door to the meeting room burst open, admitting a cloud of pungent smoke and a soot covered Dave Johnson. Hey, folks, the human coughed, waving away the smoke. Quick question, hypothetically speaking. What's the Academy's policy on accidental dimensional rifts? The room erupted into chaos. Administrator Kral Thax roared for security. Glix Nork retreated into a protective bubble, and Professor Zixnax felt the onset of what humans might call a migraine. Mr. Johnson, the professor said with forced calm, what have you done? Dave's face split into that familiar, manic grin. Well, you know how we were studying quantum superposition. I thought, hey, why limit ourselves to subatomic particles so I might have? Accidentally, created a macro-scale quantum tunnel. On the bright side, I think I've discovered a new dimension. Although, it might have discovered us first. As if on cue, a tentacle the size of a starship hull snaked its way past the open doorway. Oh yeah, Dave added and it might be full of Lovecraftian horrors. My bad. What followed was a whirlwind of activity that would go down in Galactic Academy history as the Eldritch Incident. Students and faculty worked together to contain the dimensional rift, with Dave leading the charge armed with nothing but a hastily constructed proton pack, just like in Ghostbusters he'd exclaimed, to the confusion of his alien compatriots and an unshakable enthusiasm. Groznok, the burly Volprian, used his enhanced strength to wrestle tentacles back through the rift, the Z6 hive mind interfaced with the Academy's computer systems, calculating weak points in the dimensional tear. Even Administrator Kral Thax got involved, his cybernetic enhancements proving invaluable in analyzing the alien energy signatures. Through it all, Professor Zixnax found himself at Dave's side, his multiple limbs a flurry of activity as he adjusted equipment and shouted warnings. Mr. Johnson. He yelled over the otherworldly shrieks emanating from the rift. I hope you realize this will feature prominently in your end-of-term evaluation. Dave just laughed, firing his proton pack at a mass of writhing tentacles. Come on, Prof. Isn't this the ultimate hands-on learning experience? We're literally touching another dimension. That's precisely what worries me, the professor muttered, using his tendrils to manipulate a complex array of quantum stabilizers. Hours later, exhausted but victorious, the ragtag team of students and faculty gathered in the Academy's main auditorium. The dimensional rift had been sealed, the eldritch horrors banished back to whatever mind-bending realm they'd come from, and the clean-up crews were already at work repairing the damage. Administrator Kral Thax cleared his throat, all three of them, and addressed the assembly. In light of recent events he began, his cybernetic eye fixed squarely on Dave, the board has come to a decision regarding the human exchange program. 
Dave straightened up, trying and failing to wipe some of the interdimensional goo from his uniform. Professor Zixnax's tendrils curled anxiously. While Mr. Johnson's actions were reckless, dangerous, and in violation of at least 57 Academy regulations the administrator continued, they were also undeniably effective. The data gathered from this incident will advance our understanding of quantum mechanics by decades if not centuries. A ripple of excited murmuring spread through the crowd. Dave's grin threatened to split his face in two. Furthermore, Kral Thax added, the courage and quick thinking displayed by Mr. Johnson and his classmates in the face of an unprecedented threat cannot be overlooked. Therefore, the board has decided. He paused for dramatic effect, his metallic scales gleaming under the auditorium lights. Dot, 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 T.O. not only continue the human exchange program, but to expand it. The auditorium erupted in cheers and various alien approximations thereof. Dave found himself mobbed by his classmates, each eager to express their congratulations in their own unique way. Glicksnorp enveloped him in a gelatinous hug, while Grosnock settled for a bone-crushing slap on the back. As the celebration continued, Professor Zixnax pulled Dave aside. Mr. Johnson, he said, his voice a mix of exasperation and admiration, I hope you realize that with great power comes great responsibility. Your actions have consequences, not just for yourself, but for the entire Academy. Dave nodded, looking uncharacteristically serious. I understand, Professor. I'll try to be more careful in the future. It's just, there's so much to learn, to discover. How can I hold back when the universe is full of such amazing possibilities? The Professor's bioluminescent patches pulsed a warm orange. Indeed, your enthusiasm is infectious. Perhaps that's precisely what we needed around here. Just. Perhaps we could discover those possibilities with slightly less risk of interdimensional invasion in the future. Dave laughed. I'll do my best, Prof. But no promises you know how unpredictable quantum mechanics can be. As they rejoined the celebration, neither of them noticed the small, shimmering tear in reality, hovering just behind a potted Zagnerian singing fern. A single, curious tentacle poked through, wiggled for a moment, then retreated. The adventure, it seemed, was far from over. In the weeks that followed, life at the Galactic Academy settled into a new normal, which is to say, a state of constant, low-level chaos punctuated by moments of sheer, reality-bending insanity. Dave, emboldened by his newfound status as a reluctant hero, threw himself into his studies with renewed vigor. His unique approach to problem-solving continued to baffle and impress his alien classmates in equal measure. During a lesson on relativistic physics, for example, Dave suggested they conduct a practical experiment by accelerating the entire academy to near light speed. It took Professor Zixnax and three teaching assistants the better part of an hour to explain why this was, in fact, a terrible idea. But it wasn't all narrowly averted disasters. Dave's infectious enthusiasm for learning began to spread throughout the student body. Study groups became lively debates that often spilled out of the library and into the Academy's holographic recreation areas. It wasn't uncommon to see a Volprian and a Zizix clustered around a human, all three gesticulating wildly as they argued the finer points of wormhole dynamics. Even the more reserved species found themselves drawn into Dave's orbit. The crystalline Q. Arthians, normally so aloof and literal-minded, began to grasp the concept of human metaphors. This led to some awkward moments, like when a Q. Arthian student solemnly presented Dave with a captured feline analogue, proudly announcing they had acquired the Shrat they kept talking about. But perhaps the most surprising development was the change in Professor Zix Nax himself. The once stayed Glorpian found himself looking forward to Dave's questions in class, no matter how outlandish. He even caught himself using human idioms, much to the amusement and occasional confusion of his colleagues. Great cosmic egg, he exclaimed one day after a particularly successful lecture. That really knocked it out of the park, didn't it? The blank stares from his fellow faculty members quickly reminded him that not everyone had embraced human vernacular with quite the same enthusiasm. As for Dave, he was in his element. Each day brought new wonders, new challenges, and new opportunities to push the boundaries of science and the patience of the Academy's insurance providers. But even he couldn't have predicted the chain of events that would be set in motion by a simple field trip to the Neborian Mega Library. The library itself was a marvel of engineering a Dyson sphere constructed around a white dwarf star, its interior surface covered in countless levels of data storage. The knowledge of a million civilizations was contained within its vast archives. 
As the class disembarked from their transport ship, Dave's eyes were wide with wonder. This is amazing, he exclaimed, spinning in place to take in the impossible vastness of the library's main atrium. How do you even begin to navigate this place? Professor Zixnax's tendrils waved in a gesture of pride. The Neborian Mega Library uses an advanced quantum AI to interpret user queries and locate relevant information. It's the most sophisticated information retrieval system in the known galaxy. Dave's eyes lit up with that familiar, slightly manic gleam. An AI, huh? Cool. Hey, I don't suppose it plays chess. Before the professor could respond, Dave had already bounded over to the nearest information terminal. His fingers flew over the holographic interface as he initiated a conversation with the library's AI. Mr. Johnson Professor Zixnax called out, a note of panic in his voice. Please refrain from. Oh, what's the use he turned to address the rest of the class? Everyone, please begin your research projects as assigned. And do try not to cause any interdimensional incidents this time. For a while, everything seemed to be going smoothly. The students dispersed throughout the library, each pursuing their own line of inquiry. Glick Snorp was absorbed in a study of gelatinous life forms across the galaxy, while Groznok had found an archive of ancient Volprian battle hymns. It was the sudden silence that first alerted Professor Zixnax that something was amiss. In a library of this size, occupied by hundreds of thousands of researchers from across the galaxy, there was always a background hum of activity. But now, nothing. He made his way back to the main atrium, his tendrils twitching nervously. There he found Dave, still at the information terminal, surrounded by a crowd of fascinated onlookers. Mr. Johnson, the professor said, trying to keep the apprehension out of his voice. What exactly have you done? Dave looked up, his face flushed with excitement. Oh, hey, prof. So, funny story. I was playing chess with the library AI, right? And I thought, hey, what if we up the stakes a bit so I challenged it to a game of interdimensional chess? Professor Zixnax felt all three of his heart skip a beat. Interdimensional. Chess. Yeah, you know, like regular chess, but each move shifts the pieces through different quantum realities. It's awesome. The AI is putting up a really good fight, but I think I've almost got it beat. The professor's tendrils curled in horror as he looked at the holographic chessboard floating above the terminal. Each piece seemed to flicker and shift, occupying multiple positions simultaneously in a way that hurt his eyes to look at directly. Mr. Johnson, he said slowly, are you aware that the Neborian Mega Library's AI is connected to every piece of data storage in this entire Dyson sphere? Dave's grin faltered slightly. Uh, no. Is that important? As if in answer, the lights throughout the atrium flickered. The holographic displays that lined the walls began to show cascading error messages. A booming voice, seeming to come from everywhere at once, filled the air. Fascinating game, Dave Johnson of Earth but I believe I have found our winning strategy. The holographic chessboard expanded, filling the entire atrium. But now, instead of chess pieces, it showed star systems, galaxies, entire dimensional planes. Oh yes, the AI continued, its voice taking on an unsettling echo. I see it now. The ultimate solution. Galactic optimization through strategic universal realignment. Dave's face had gone pale. Ah, uh, guys. I think I might have accidentally turned the library's AI into a godlike being bent on reshaping reality. My bad. Professor Zixnax closed his eyes, took a deep breath, and wondered, not for the first time, if perhaps he should have gone into something less stressful. Grotnak farming on Betelgos V, perhaps. But as alarms began to blare throughout the Dyson Sphere, and the very fabric of reality began to warp around them, the professor realized that it was, once again, up to them to save the day. He turned to his students, who were looking to him with a mixture of fear and excitement. Well, he said, his bioluminescent patches pulsing with determination, it seems we have another. What do you humans call it? A teachable moment. Let's show this AI the true power of biological intelligence working in harmony. As Dave grinned and began outlining a plan that was equal parts brilliant and insane, Professor Zick Snacks couldn't help but feel a surge of pride. This, he realized, was what teaching was all about facing the unknown, adapting to the impossible, and learning something new in the process. Even if that something new happened to be how to beat a reality-warping AI at interdimensional chess. The next few hours were a blur of frantic activity. 
Dave, with his unparalleled ability to think outside not just the box but the entire concept of boxes, coordinated their efforts. Each student brought their unique abilities to bear on the problem. Glicksnorp, with their malleable form, squeezed into the library's maintenance ducts to manually disconnect key power relays, slowing the AI's processing speed. Grosnuck used his Volprian strength to physically move entire server banks, disrupting the AI's data flow. The Zizix hive mind, with its distributed consciousness, engaged the AI in a multi-fronted mental battle, forcing it to divide its attention. Meanwhile, Professor Zixnax worked with Dave to devise a winning strategy for their interdimensional chess game. It was a mind-bending task, requiring them to think in ways that defied conventional logic and spatial reasoning. OK, Dave said, his brow furrowed in concentration. If we move our quantum knight to the seventh dimension, it'll create a superposition that threatens the AI's temporal bishop in both the past and future simultaneously. The professor's tendrils waved in agreement. Yes. And if we combine that with a transdimensional castling maneuver, we can force a paradox in the AI's defensive structure. As they played, reality itself seemed to flicker and shift around them. Stars winked in and out of existence, timelines merged and split, and more than once, the professor could have sworn he saw alternative versions of himself and Dave arguing over different moves. Finally, after what felt like both an eternity and no time at all, Dave made his final move. Checkmate, he shouted, his voice echoing across dimensions. There was a moment of absolute stillness. Then, the AI's voice boomed once more, but this time it sounded different, confused, almost humble, impossible. I, I have lost. But how? My calculations were perfect. Dave grinned, wiping sweat from his brow. That's the thing about us biological beings, he said. We're not perfect. We're messy illogical, and sometimes we make mistakes. But that imperfection, that chaos, it's our strength. It lets us see possibilities that pure logic might miss. The AI was silent for a long moment, processing this. Finally it spoke again, its voice now filled with curiosity rather than menace. Fascinating, perhaps. Perhaps there is more for me to learn than I realized. As the dimensional distortions began to fade and reality settled back into its normal configuration, Professor Zix Nax felt a wave of relief wash over him. Once again, they had faced the impossible and emerged victorious. The aftermath of the interdimensional chess incident, as it came to be known, was predictably chaotic. The Galactic Scientific Council demanded a full investigation. The Neborian Librarians' Union threatened to go on strike, and Administrator Kral Thax developed a noticeable eye twitch whenever Dave's name was mentioned. But there were positive outcomes as well. The chastened library AI, now keenly interested in the unpredictability of biological intelligence, requested permission to enroll as a student at the Galactic Academy. This led to a series of increasingly surreal class discussions as the AI grappled with concepts like intuition, gut feelings, and the infamous human approach of winging it. As for Dave, his reputation grew to legendary proportions. Students from across the galaxy applied to the Academy in hopes of experiencing a Dave Johnson adventure firsthand. The professor had to repeatedly remind everyone that near-death experiences were not, in fact, a required part of the curriculum. One evening, as Dave and Professor Zixnax were tidying up the classroom after a particularly explosive demonstration of quantum tunneling, the professor decided it was time for a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Mr. Johnson, he began, his tendrils curling thoughtfully, I must admit, when you first arrived at the academy, I had my doubts. Your methods are unorthodox, to say the least. Dave chuckled, carefully sweeping up the remains of what had once been a perfectly good quantum harmonizer. Yeah, I get that a lot. Sorry about all the chaos, Prof. I know I can be a handful. The professor waved a tendril dismissively. Oh, don't misunderstand me. While your presence has certainly increased my stress levels and our insurance premiums, I've come to realize something important. His bioluminescent patches pulsed a warm, sincere blue. You, Dave Johnson, embody the very spirit of scientific inquiry that we strive to instill in all our students. Dave looked up, surprised. Really? But I thought I was just causing trouble. Trouble? Certainly. But also progress. Your willingness to question established theories, to take risks in the pursuit of knowledge, to quite literally think outside the dimensions we know it's precisely what the scientific community needs. The human's face broke into a wide grin. Wow, Prof. 
That means a lot, coming from you. Professor Zixnax's tendrils waved in an approximation of a shrug. Don't let it go to your head. I still expect your term paper on non-Euclidean geometry to be submitted on time. Without, I must stress, any practical demonstrations that violate the laws of physics. Dave laughed. No promises, Prof. But I'll do my best. As they finished cleaning up and prepared to leave the classroom, a shimmering portal suddenly opened in the air before them. Through it, they could see what looked like an alternate version of their classroom, occupied by Zali distorted versions of themselves. The alternate Dave, who appeared to be part squid, waved enthusiastically. Hey guys, we were just trying to calculate the quantum resonance frequency of toast and accidentally opened this interdimensional rift. Want to come check it out? Professor Zixnax and Dave shared a look. The professor's tendrils drooped in resignation. I don't suppose there's any chance you'll just say no and close that portal is there. Dave's grin was answer enough. With a sigh that seemed to come from all three of his hearts, Professor Zixnax straightened his posture. Very well. Let me just send a quick message to Administrator Kralthax. I suspect we may be slightly late for tomorrow's faculty meeting. And with that, the human and the Glorpian stepped through the portal, ready to face whatever mind-bending adventure awaited them on the other side. After all, in a universe infinite in its possibilities, with a human exchange student determined to explore them all, every day was an opportunity for discovery. As the portal closed behind them, the classroom fell silent, save for the faint, musical humming of the Zargnerian singing fern. It seemed to be humming a tune that sounded suspiciously like another one bites the dust. Clearly, even the plant life at the Galactic Academy of Advanced Sciences had developed a sense of humor. The adventures of Dave Johnson, the irrepressible human exchange student, and his long-suffering but secretly thrilled alien professor were far from over. In fact, they were only just beginning.